willy nilly. You can't go in there just any old way. You got to study to show yourself approved unto God. Workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. You need to spend time in the presence of the Lord if you're going to go ahead and minister to people's lives and heart. You need to get a revelation knowledge of God so that you can give a revelation word so that you have a word in your mouth that sustains the weary in every season. So you still trying to walk up to everybody and say, Jesus loves you. Well, they, Jesus does love them, but that's not what everybody needs to hear. Some people need to hear Jesus can set you free. Some people need to hear Jesus can heal you. Some people need to hear Jesus can deliver you. Some people need to hear Jesus can walk, walk into your life and change you forever, turn you upside down and inside out. Some people need to hear that Jesus can release them from every bondage they've ever been under. Some people need to hear that Jesus can heal every hurt that is in their heart, every broken place, every torn place, every ripped place, that he can mend the broken, that he can pour the oil and the wine into those places that have been cracked and bruised and still respond to the moment of the sensitivity of their pain. Uh, some people need to hear that Jesus can heal every heart hurt uh, and he can hurt, heal every heart. But you got to spend time with him. People, the Bible tells us, were convinced that Jesus could heal. There were certain people in the Bible who were absolutely convinced that he can heal. Anybody in here convinced that he can heal? Mm, okay, I got about half of a church up in here right now. I said, is there anybody absolutely sure beyond a shadow of a doubt? I know that I know that I know. I am fully persuaded, Paul said. I am convinced beyond all shadow of a doubt that my Savior, my Lord, my Christ, and my King has the power to heal every broken thing in my life. If you you believe it you ought to give him a shout right now it's one thing to believe it it is another thing to act on what you believe because the Bible says that those who were convinced that he could heal brought sick people See, if you're convinced there's going to be a rain shower, you're going to walk around with an umbrella. I know you're supposed to say umbrella, but I've been around some folk who say umbrella. So I, you know, for both y'all, amen. For those of you who say umbrella and for those of you who say umbrella, they walk around with one of them. If you believe that there's going to be rain, you carry an umbrella. You get a raincoat. When I was a little boy, they used to make us wear galoshes. Big old yellow rubber ugly duck shoes. And they, they had another name for them. You can't use that no more. But when I was a little boy, that's what they called them. But you ask somebody old, they'll tell you after church. Amen. But you had to go out prepared for the rain. Yeah. Yeah. You had to go out. And you were equipped. I say you were equipped. Mm. See, you, you're equipped with the knowledge that Jesus can heal, so you go and you do something. The corresponding action to your belief, the resulting effect of what you believe is that you function in the revelation and the outworking of what you do believe. Therefore, if I believe that Jesus can heal, then I'm going to get sick people and bring them to Jesus who can heal them. I'm not going to just leave them sick. I'm not going to leave them broke, busted, and disgusted. I'm going to say, you know what? Jesus can heal you. Now, let me take you by the hand and bring you to Jesus. If I got to go 60 miles, I'll bring you to Jesus. If I got to go through some storm and rain, I will bring you to Jesus. If I got to put you in my car to get you healed, I will bring you. To, if I got to buy you lunch, I don't even like you. I will bring you to Jesus. So that is exactly what happened in this story. And as a result, Jesus performed mighty works in healing the sick. 
He performed mighty works in healing the sick and the afflicted as an integral part of his ministry. In other words, we go back to that understanding of the fact that he was multifaceted. He could heal, he could deliver, he could speak, he could set free. There wasn't anything he could not do. But when he showed up in certain regions, certain places, uh, based on the declaration of the kingdom that was multifaceted and it, multi-generational, all he had to do was declare the power that was inherently wrapped up and locked up in the kingdom waiting to be released. And once he did, then that integral part of his ministry as a healer would manifest and come forth. And so he would show up. He would show up as a comforter. He'd show up as a forgiver. He would show up as the healer of a broken heart. He would show up um, in any capacity. He would show up and speak people out of their existences where they were and transition them into the season of revelation that God had for them. Um, oh, I, I, I know the times when God has, has, has sent me somewhere just to show up and allow the power of the kingdom of God to be made manifest through my life. I didn't understand necessarily the complexities or the various nature of everything that I was going to find, but I just knew I was going there to bless somebody. I knew I was going there to bless people with the kingdom revelation, and as a result, aspects of the nature of the character of Christ showed up in my life in and through me by the Holy Ghost, and people got exactly what they needed. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? Jesus shows up declaring the kingdom and he appears then as the great physician. I'm glad he has multiple identities. You declare the kingdom and he's going to show up as the king. You declare the kingdom, he's going to show up as the great physician. You declare the kingdom, he's going to show up as the defender of the abused and the oppressed and the put upon. You show, you declare the kingdom and he will show up as the savior of all mankind. Oh, you declare the kingdom and you'll see him on the cross, high and lifted up, the arms stretched wide, descended and ascending and moving in the power of the declaration of the fullness of God's plan for the world you'll see him he shows up and he appears as the great physician able to cure by a word or a touch sometimes Jesus has to look at you and you get healed sometimes all he got to do is just bat an eye in your direction sometimes all you got to do is think about you and you get something so hey sandalaboku all of us sometimes all you got to do is just look at you once that you got something you didn't know you got when did it happen i don't know i felt somebody looking at me yeah it was the favor of god on you it was the eye of god on your life Sometimes uh, he will just go ahead and rear up and pull back his sleeve uh, and he will extend the arm of power and grace and mercy and touch you uh, and the ever flowing power of the ever living Christ uh, will flow out of his life uh, and you will receive it uh, and you shall be forever changed. I'm glad he's not limited to one dimension of healing. I'm Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says that when the Apostle Paul was on the earth and he was ministering, he would take handkerchiefs and, and, and aprons and he, he wasn't selling them for a hundred dollar seed offering. There's nothing wrong with a seed offering. We believe in seed offering, but he wasn't making money off of them necessarily. He, he just would use them and then he'd, he'd be done with it and then he'd throw it down, go over here, do something else. And, and the Bible says that people would come and just kind of surreptitiously and clandestinely look to see if he wasn't looking and say, no, oh, yeah. And then they stick it in their pocket. And they go home. And they throw it on somebody who was sick and they'd get well. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. He can heal anytime, any way he wants to. He's not limited to your religious box. He's not really limited to our, our, our denominational persuasions or, 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 or the deliberations of, of a doctrinal discord. Hey, no, 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 no. He doesn't have to hold a committee meeting to decide whether or not you want to heal him, to decide how he's going to heal. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, because he is sovereign. He is omnipotent. He is the Lord of glory. You can't tell him nothing. He does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Anytime I say something, that blesses you you can go ahead and shout one time yeah. 
I'm glad we preach him that way in here. I said, I'm glad we preach him that way in here. I said, I'm glad we preach him that way in here. No, you're not with it. I said, I'm glad we preach him that way in this house. Let me step over here for two seconds. You know it's going to be longer than that, so anybody might just say, give him grace, Lord. Do you know that there are people across this nation today who are worshiping idols? Stop. Because you think I'm talking about statues or icons. Mm -mm. I'm talking about a distorted picture of God. The prophet said, the God said through the mouth of the prophet, he said, why, why do you worship stones and, and images and, 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 and blocks of wood and blocks of stone that have eyes but do not see? You, you, you call out to, to images with, of stone and wood that, that have ears, but they cannot hear. Arms that cannot touch. Mouths, but they cannot speak. Do you know how many churches there are across this nation who preach a God who cannot hear, a God who cannot speak, a God who cannot heal, a God who cannot touch, walk, or even deliver anything or anyone? They worship an idol, declaiming that they are worshiping God, but they're not. Because unless you worship him in spirit and in truth, in the revelation of who he really is, in all of his power, all of his glory, all of his majesty, all of his might, all of his brilliance, everything that he is, everything that contains him and he contains, the one in whom we live and move and have our being, the one who stood on nothing and created everything, the one who still has the power to heal the sick and raise the dead and set the captive free unless you preach him unless you worship him that God that Lord that Savior that Jesus that Christ that Messiah other than that you're worshiping an idol I'm glad we preach him the way he is in here I'm just waiting for greater revelation so I can share with you more and more and more who he really is. Oh, God. The Bible says in Isaiah, the prophet declared 700 years before Christ, says he took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. That's not just spiritual, my brother, my sister. That is everything. That's all of your sicknesses. That's all of your diseases. That's all of your infirmities. That's everything that's broke. He's going to fix it. Jesus' healing ministry shows his concern for wholeness. When he moved about preaching and declaring the kingdom, people received what they needed because he was concerned. Uh, he had compassion, the Bible says. His insides were gripped uh, with care and concern for those who were hurting. I came to tell somebody today that God cares about you. God cares about your condition. God cares about your sickness. God cares about your struggle. God cares about your strivings. He cares uh, about your disappointments. He cares uh, about everything that's going on in your life. He cares. He cares. He cares. And his miracles also proved that he was truly God. Because nobody else could do what Jesus did unless he be God. His miracles point to the supremacy of his word over the powers of sickness and death. There was no word that is more powerful than his word. When the doctor says no, Jesus says yes. Ah, when the bill collector says, hey, I'm going to cut you off, Jesus says, I am Jehovah Jireh, the God uh, that will supply every need that you have. I'm the God who sees the need before there is a need, and I've already met it before it even occurred. I am your provider. I've got a word that overcomes every word. I've got a name that overcomes every At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Somebody ought to praise him. And if you believe it, 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 just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Anybody, somebody, everybody give him a shout right now. Yeah. 
Jesus not only proclaimed the kingdom, he demonstrated his authority by healing the sick. He had kingdom authority because he's the king of the kingdom. He had kingdom authority because he's the king of the kingdom. He had kingdom authority because he is the king of the kingdom. Shout king. Shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together and give him a ridiculous praise right now. Come on. Give him a king's praise. Give him a worthy praise. Give him a dignitary's praise. I'm not talking about Obama. I'm not talking about any ruler across the nation or the world. I'm talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The one who is above supreme lifted high. He sits high, looks low. He is seated at the right hand of the Father right now making intercession for you and for me. Somebody praise him. The good news. Everybody shout the good news. Say the good news is the gospel. The good news this morning is that the kingdom has come. I'm not waiting for it. It's already here. I can buck and shuck and tie my bow tie and, and, and come to my house in a Honda. It's already here. I don't have to do that. I, yeah, I don't have to do that. E-D-D-I-E. My name is Eddie. No, no, no. I don't have to do that. I love to do it, but that kingdom's here. Shout it's here. Shout it's here. Shove your neighbor good. Tell neighbor the kingdom is here. The good news is that the kingdom has come and that Jesus is here, that he cares, hallelujah, and he can heal. There's no problem too great or too small for him to handle. Say, my problem is not too big nor too small for him to handle. Now, that's your word for the day. But there's somebody else who needs a word outside of this room. You can't keep it to yourself. I say you can't keep it to yourself. The Bible says that, that in Acts that they told the disciples to shut up and quit talking. The Pharisees, don't you ever talk again in his name. And the Bible says they said, he, he, you don't understand. We must speak of the things that we have seen and heard. That sounds like an outside impulse. We, we must speak and declare the things that we have seen and heard. Literal Greek. Everybody ready? He's on the inside and he insists that we do. He's on the inside. Shove somebody, tell him he's on the inside. Tell him he's on the inside. It's an inside job. He is on the inside of you and he insists that you tell somebody. There are people outside of this room who need to know and to hear and to have a revelation of the fact uh, that Jesus cares and that he can heal and that he is here to heal, that his power is still great, that there's no problem too great nor too small for him to handle. Hallelujah. 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 They need to hear it. They need to hear it. That you can't keep this to yourself. This is not about you and you three. This is for him and them. Amen. He's waiting for you to bring somebody. See, there are five different instances in this Bible, actually more, but we're only going to do five of them for this particular month of, of, of messages. And the reality is this, people understood who he was, and then they brought people to him once the revelation of his person and his identity came to pass in their own understanding. If you know who he is, then you need to bring somebody to get a revelation of who you know who he is. You can't keep it to yourself. I said, you can't keep it to yourself. I said, you can't keep it to yourself. You must share it. You must share it. Some of you are rejecting this word. I ain't telling nobody. You must share it. You have the good news. You are emissaries, ambassadors of the king. And you are not emissaries nor ambassadors unless you accurately represent him who sent you. 
So it is time to open your mouth. By the time we finish this series, I'm believing that you will do. Everybody said, well, what about you? I'm equipping you right now to do what you're supposed to do. I'm the under shepherd. Sheep beget sheep. Don't you look at me asking me to give birth to a sheep. It ain't going to happen, baby. But sheep beget sheep. Sheep beget after their kind. Are you following me? Are you here? Are you breathing this small? Are you in the room this morning? It's time for you to go to work. It's time. You cannot sit there on your blessed assurance until Jesus comes. He said, occupy till I come. Doesn't mean sit on a seat. It means get to work. Occupy the space in which I've given you to function in your spiritual realm of influence and do something while you're there. Shout, create a disturbance, dance, jump, make some attention, get to Jesus, bring somebody to Jesus. You hear all the time these kind somebody make some noise. Stop. It's time for the church to make some noise. I said it's time for the church to make some noise. It's time for the rappers are making noise. The, 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 the political uh, uh, fringe, uh, the liberals are making noise. Uh, homosexual community making all the noise. Anyway, it's time for the church to make some noise. The terrorists are making noise. The subversives are making noise. And the church is asleep. Wake up. Get up. Open your mouth. And bring somebody to Jesus. I'm preaching good this morning. Stand on your feet. Healing is one of Jesus' credentials. If I appear somewhere and they want me to prove who I am, I must show credentials. When I got on the plane, I had to show a, an identification that verified I was who I said that I was. It proved my identity. It proved that I am who I say I am. Oh, God. <laughs> and so they saw my credentials and let me on. I also have a badge. That helped a little bit. But they saw that and, and they let me on the plane. When Jesus showed up as the king of the kingdom he showed up with his credentials I'm a healer so I'll heal I'm a deliverer so watch me deliver I'm a provider so watch me provide I'm a declarer of sight to the blind so watch me do exactly what I said I'm going to do watch me reveal my identity with my credentials the good news is that when he shows up, his credentials show up. He doesn't show up without his credentials. His credentials are in this house. I can't speak for other churches. That's not my business. But I can speak for this house. I can speak for the house of Genesis. I can speak for the house. Not one good promise uh, of all the promises that he made. Uh, ever failed nor will fail uh, to the house of Genesis. Every one of them will be fulfilled. Uh, it's time for you to bring people to the house of the Lord. Uh, that they might be healed, delivered, and set free. If you believe it, go ahead. Lift your hands and give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I 
I want to sing that song we said we sing worthy we sing worthy we sing worthy to the Lord how many of you believe he's worthy right now how many of you believe he's worthy of your song? How many of you believe he's worthy of you leading somebody to him? How many of you believe he's worthy of you bringing somebody to him? It's time to bring somebody to Jesus. Will you do it? Will you start today? Will you start tomorrow? Will you start this week and maybe by the end of this month we'll see this place filled to overflowing. Maybe by next month we'll see more seats needed. Maybe by the month after that we'll have an overflow. Oh, it can happen, but it's all about you bringing him to him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. If you know he's worthy, go ahead and lift your hand and say, I'll do it. Say, I'll bring somebody. I'll bring somebody to Jesus. I'll bring them to the healer. I'll bring the broken, the hurt, the halting, the afflicted, the bound. I'll bring them to Jesus because he can heal them and set them free. Come on, sing that chorus with me.